Welcome to uh, Better on Blockchain, uh, episode two, with uh, Jay McCarthy and Chris Swinner from Reach. I'm uh, Jay McCarthy, the CTO of Reach. And I am Chris Swinner. I'm the CEO of Reach. And what we do on Better on Blockchain is we, we kind of pick a different industry every time, and we ask the question, uh, you know, could this industry be improved or would it get any value from being on blockchain? And uh, last time we talked about uh, Uber or ride sharing. And tonight, uh, Chris, what are we going to be talking about? Social media or specifically Twitter. Um, how could you do Twitter on blockchain? I, you're hearing a lot about um, actually Jack Dorsey himself talks about how he wants to uh, utilize blockchain to make Twitter better. But um, I think it would like, it'd be good for us to actually really talk about it and analyze to say if uh, blockchain is right or ready for Twitter. Yeah. And the way that we try to do things is we try to like first explain what the problem is, what like, you know, try to define our terms a little bit. And then from there, we'll talk about kind of a sketch about how uh, this program could work on blockchain. And then we'll talk about the pros and cons and decide whether or not we think it's worth uh, pressing the button to really do this thing. Before we go, um, I, I do want to actually we didn't do with this in the first episode, but I want to make sure that um, the people watching this knows that this is a an interactive thing. Um, want to make sure that because uh, we're coming up in our own heads because we haven't released any of the episodes yet um, of what what uh, we'd like to talk about. So it, while you're watching this, you can go, you know what I'd really like them to talk about is real estate on the blockchain or whatever supply chain on the blockchain. Put it in the comments and we'll read it and we'll, that's how we'll decide what we'll do next. And of course, also as because this is a YouTube thing, you gotta smash that like and subscribe so that you know that uh, <laughs> things are always coming. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I think that in the future it would also be fun to do it actually live rather than just, you know, comments after the fact. But, you know, we'll, we'll slowly build our way up to that. All right, so now what is social media, specifically Twitter? Now, of course, you said social media. So, I mean, like, you know, we could, we could talk about Twitter and Facebook and, I mean, Discord. You know what I mean? Like, all of these are social media in some form. So, like, we want to be specific to Twitter and, like, what is Twitter? Let, let's think of it in the mindset of how we would build Twitter. And then let's talk about how other social media platforms could exist as well. So, I mean, like the defining thing about Twitter, uh, like stripped to its bare essence, is, is that like I have a feed, uh, you have a feed, everybody's got a feed. They have like sole control over their feed. They like, you know, can send information. And, you know, Twitter is famous for having a small amount of information. Um, uh, and then so I can like publish a very small amount subscribe to other people, find out what they're doing. And then there's some, you know, very light interaction stuff. So there's like, you know, direct messages and there are, uh, you know, retreats and there's like replying to people. So there's a little bit of stuff around the edges, but, you know, stripped to its bare minimum, it's me and my feed. Let's talk about like how we would structure this. What like in um, what, like, where would you start with actually building this with blockchain? And, and the first thing I always say is that you have to actually start with the public good. What is the public good that people like? What is the thing that you own um, and that you own yourself? You own your feed. And uh, what's that look like in blockchain world? Yeah, I think in blockchain world, your feed is probably going to be a smart contract and the publications that you make. Probably it's not going to be worthwhile to store them in like the persistent state on the chain. Probably it makes more sense to store them as like the the history of interactions on the chain. But that's I mean, that's another point, though, as well, is that um, so there's sensor resistance, which, you know, makes sure that no, you couldn't be stopped. But there's also immutable, um, the immutable aspect of it. And if you are putting the actual message itself or the actual story in the state of your feed on the chain, that means it's immutable. But if you're actually storing um, a pointer to uh to what what you're saying some from that point somewhere else there's really no guarantee that you change that or somebody changes that or it gets changed so um that is one of the downsides as well this feature of immutability um it's kind of uh i think some people will want it and some people won't want it so for instance like you know if i tweet uh, a correct prediction about the super bowl uh and the you know the blockchain twitter has this property that uh, you can't change it, then that means that like you can trust that I really did have that great prediction uh, about the Super Bowl. Um, on the other hand, 
if, uh, you know, one of my staffers says something really dumb and I really want to delete that tweet. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a way to do that. So basically, there's kind of a pros and cons about making things immutable. And one of the, you know, problems is, is that you really can't have it both ways um, on blockchain. It's either got to be immutable or not. And uh, you might think that that's like a pure bad. But the thing to remember is, is that uh, in the centralized world, the only option is that it's mutable. You just don't even have the choice. And it's mutable and in a way that is, uh, you know, hidden from you, right? Because Twitter can do things that we don't know anything about. But there's actually another very important about thing about Twitter that um, Twitter deals with all, of, all the time is uh, verified users. Now, um, is there anything that the blockchain, I'm asking this question because I know the answer, but I know you do too. Is there anything that the blockchain could do to, um, to help with that? Well, I mean, the thing is, is that um, you could very easily know that this contract is owned by this particular public key. Because like, you may, you may have this idea that um, you have like an account or a wallet on blockchain, but really what you have is a public key um, which uniquely identifies you and, you know, anyone else. But there's nothing about, uh, so like m me, for instance, I have a vanity Algorand um, uh, address because I basically, Dan and I wrote this program that like just generates new public keys until we found one that like looks cool to us. So he's got, uh, he's got, Dan, he's got the Dan fund um, and I've got J fund. Um, that's what those are the first letters. So anyway, so, uh, th but the thing is, is that there's nothing about J fund that like says, oh, this is Jay McCarthy, the CTO of reach. No, that doesn't, but, but if I keep using it over and over and over again, then it can, it can gain an identity just like the fact that like my face looks like this, you know what I mean? Like your presence in the world creates For an other things. Yeah, exactly. Like it, there's not a. There's not a sense in which like J fund is J, but J fund is the same account that did this other thing over here and the same one that did this other thing over here. And, you know, if I can like prove like, uh, you know, I'm holding up the newspaper that says, uh, you know, uh, I'm verified. This is me. And it's signed with my public key. Then, you know, now you, you might you might have more confidence. Now, of course, there are a million people that are trying to solve the, quote, identity problem on blockchain. And ultimately, this is what they're just trying to do. They're just trying to have some sort of um, real world verification of who you are that ties that to a public key. And then now that's really you. So the issue is like we're saying we, we own the Twitter feed, but really, we are we're oh, I own the Chris feed. Um, and you own the J feed, but we're floating out in the blockchain space right now, right? So how do people that want to read? I mean, Everybody wants to read, but how do people find me that want to read what I have to say? Yeah, and I think that in addition to talking about how do they find me, there's also this other question of like, what are things like replies and DMs and retweets even mean? Retweets are kind of obvious because retweets, that's just a message on my feed that says, go look at this message on Chris's feed. So that makes sense. But like with a reply or a DM, something about those is, is that that's like me doing something that to you, Chris, but like, well, obviously you follow me, but if I do this to like, I don't know, like Carly Rae Jepsen, like she's not following Jay, she's not following the Jay feed. So she's not going to find out about my clever, uh, you know, DM to her or reply or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, what does it mean to follow something, right? Like, uh, in the centralized world, like, Twitter literally has a database that says like, you know, primary key user, secondary key, like who they're following. And there's just this big thing that says, oh, Jay's following this person. Jay's following that person. And what is the point of keeping that information? It's like, wh wh where could that be? It could be in a centralized server like it is on Twitter. Uh, could it be on, quote, the blockchain? Could like... I send you a message like your feed that says, all right, I'm following you now. And like, why would I do that? Um, I could also just like keep track. I could just have on my computer. OK, well, I, I'm I want to pay attention to Chris's feed. Uh, this this contract, this identity. Right. Um, exactly. But, they, but you're I think you're spot on. Like, why would you send that to me? Right. Um, and yes, yeah. there would be some type of uh, encryption to my messages that I will only actually provide the ability to view that if you paid me or something of that sort. Yeah, but even doing something like that is pretty hard to do because um, you couldn't, I could, you, you could like say, oh, if I pay you, 
uh, then I'll send you something. But how do we check that the thing that you sent me is actually a useful thing later on? I mean, there are fancy encryption schemes that could make something like this plausible, but that's really not something that's done on the blockchain right now. So it's kind of too hard to do that. Uh, I think that what could potentially make sense would be something like, uh, I pay attention to replies of people who paid me. Um, and so, you know, if you reply to somebody, then if they happen to follow you, then that's fine. But maybe you could like send them a message. Uh, sorry, when I say send them a message, I'm not talking about in the Twitter program. I mean, like you would send their contract a message that says, uh, hey, Jay just replied to you. And so you should pay attention to that. And the thing is, is that, uh, you know, your client could, of course, ignore that. But probably what we're going to do is, you know, there's this like uh, a mores that will develop that says like, oh, well, when someone does this and, you know, you could basically charge people for me to listen to you. Um, that I, I can imagine something like that developing. The way that I actually envision how like uh, decentralized Twitter would work is very similar to how decentralized Uber would work. We talked about that in the last episode. Yeah. The Twitter company would still exist. That the um, and what they would do is rather than actually hosting the the feeds uh, themselves, what they do is they index feeds and they index feeds and they provide an interface to display the actual information on the feed in the way that they want. Um, the cool thing here is that it it means that they don't own you, um, but it does mean that they still actually can tailor an experience. But it also means that tw evil Twitter or Twitter clone could also exist and with and actually consume the same feeds and be able to display something else. And this is where the, the censor resistant uh, this censor resistant comes in is that yeah. uh, Twitter could still censor. You know, they they don't want Chris to talk about ice cream. I don't know why, but maybe that. Um, and they yeah, they're they vegan. Say, yeah, they're vegan. They they no no ice cream posts at all, so they don't ever post it. But yeah. evil, uh, you know, evil Twitter as happy with ice cream uh, tweets. Yeah. So they display it all. Let me just uh, sort of be, take what you're saying and make it a little bit concrete. So, you know, there's all these tweet, there, there's all these, uh, the, there's all these feeds that are floating around out there. And it's hard for me to keep track of which ones I care about. It's hard for me to find new ones that I care about. Maybe there's this, you know, retrading thing. I also really like seeing ads about what I'm interested in uh, whenever I, you know, open my web browser. So I want to see all those things. So what the Twitter company does is it goes off and it has the index of these things and it says, oh, you know, Jay, you're following these five people and you probably would like to follow this other person as well. And here are some things that you may be interested in. And I feel like they actually are pretty like I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but they're I feel like they're pretty good at noticing what I want to, to look at. You know, they, they can tell they I can tell that I know, but they know. <laughs> yeah. And they're and they're pretty good at it. You know what I mean? So anyways, so that's a valuable service. And with that valuable service, like they could, for instance, uh, you know, charge people to like, I'm kind of thinking ahead about how they're going to make money, right? Like, obviously, they're going to make money by suggesting, you know, the advertising to me, they could also, um, you know, have, uh, you know, your really cool stamp um, on a feed or something like that. Okay, but now that's like, like the positive side. But the dark side is, is that we are saying is that if this is my main interface, then they could actually do the filtering in the client. Which means that Chris, Chris's feed really does say vanilla ice cream is a flavor. It's not not it's not the like vanilla is a flavor. This is something, uh, you know, that uh, ice cream aficionados will fight about whether or not vanilla is a flavor. Anyway, so that's what he says. And Twitter's like, no, no, we can't have this message there. And they could filter that on the user interface. And what you're saying is that they could absolutely do that. And most people, their Twitter experience could be censored in this way. But there's nothing special about the data. Unlike today, which is that if I wanted to make a different user interface for Twitter that actually showed all of the ice cream posts, I could not do that because that data is literally gone. It's been deleted um, from their database and no one else has access to it. But we could there could be different competing interfaces to Twitter. And perhaps what they could do is they could have different degrees of uh, advertising. They could have different um, suggestion algorithms. They could have different censoring policies, and people could make their own decisions about which one of those they wanted to use. And there would be this public good that many people were trying to provide the best interface for that good. And myself, as a feed provider, I'm not handcuffed to their decisions. 
Um, so like you may not even know, like I could start using evil Twitter uh, and you wouldn't even know that I was using evil Twitter. So here, here's a great question, though, because so we're in blockchain. We're, you know, game theory. It's a system. It's not a thing. How do how would we actually incentivize the people that create create the feeds, actually pr create the content? So I think that, uh, you know, there's this concept um, that like Brave uh, is doing called the basic attention token, where it's like if you pay attention to advertising, then you can get something out of it later. And we can imagine something like that. Is that what you're saying? Like where if I pay attention to advertising, maybe then that gives me, you know, uh, coins so I can put stuff on my feed. Yeah. Or like where it could be is that maybe there's a. Uh, I mean, I guess you could do this without actually a, a, a new currency, but like a tipping system or a a way of, of being able to for people to, um, you know, a way to track in some kind of way, like, a, the, by the way, every time we do these, this is like a fresh conversation, <laughs> I haven't had much thought about it, but a way to actually build like an economic system where um, it allows for individuals to like, if it is actually consumed, maybe you have some type of new system where you can say, okay, maybe there's a rating system where if, if uh, you you get enough upvotes, you then become more, I don't yeah. know. I'm well, let me get things at the wall right now. Something. Let, let me give you a straw man. Uh, so uh, like buttons and dislike buttons and little reactions are really common all throughout social media. And uh, the question is, is like, what are those in the decentralized world? If they are like replies, then that means when I click, you know, like on vanilla is a flavor, uh, that is really me actually posting a message to my feed, which is going to cost me something. Right. Um, and maybe what we do just because that's going to cost me something no matter what. Uh, maybe what we do is we say something like, I don't know, uh, I configure my browser, you know, my client so that um, every day. If I do, if I typically do 20 likes in a day, then maybe one of them will actually send money to the person that I send it to. And it's random on my client. And so basically I know that every day I'm going to be spending, you know, 10 cents on clicking likes and uh, nine cents of that is going to be like, or I don't know, maybe like one cent of that is going to be posting, posting on my feed. And then nine cents of it is actually going to pay a random person that I click the like on. So like. I'm not saying that it is the perfect idea, but that idea is extremely easy to implement on uh, on the blockchain. And it's a reasonable, you know, people are going to have a very small amount that they're willing to dedicate to doing this. And that actually is going to be way more money than people are getting right now for likes. So one thing that's like me rambling about, you know, trying to think about like what what's the potential incentive is, is that um, incentives on the blockchain is actually are hard um, because of how the blockchain works. Um, Sybil attacks are extremely uh, easy to do on a blockchain. So you need to make sure that you're civil resistant. You need to make sure that you need like, oh, well, make it so that every single time that um, somebody likes my post, I get a a Twitter coin. Well, then why can't why can't you spin up 10 million accounts to like your thing? Hold on, my uh... I, someone just yelled from downstairs. Uh, okay. What's a civil attack? Oh, go for it. You you're the one that actually has uh, the the PhD and the, you know the computer science research in these things. Go go for it. So I mean I think that your last example is the is the is the quintessential civil attack where um, you know if there's if there's someone else that's going to reward me for doing something then um, then if I can pretend to do that thing. Uh, and have it be cheaper to pretend to do it than have it do it for real, then I can get the get the benefit. Right. So, you know, for example, like, I don't know, imagine if we're in like a team sport, like a, imagine we're like racing. OK, so I'm wearing a Formula One hat. OK, so Formula One teams have two drivers on every right. team. Mm -hmm. And imagine that we made it so that there was some bonus that you got for like passing another car. Um, and this was independent of the way that you finished the race. Well, then I guarantee that there's going to be a time when two cars on the same team are going to go right next to each other and one's going to pass one, then the other's going to pass one, then one's going to pass one, then the other's going to pass one. And now what they're just going to do is they're just going to get tons and tons of passes, even though they're not real passes. They're not what, they're not what we were trying to incentivize. 
And so I think that when people say Sybil attack, they're not talking about some like specific attack. They're just talking about the idea of people finding loopholes and in whatever incentive structure you try to produce. And so, so like, for example, one way to talk about giving people benefit for getting likes is I watch the network. And when Chris gets lots of likes, I give him money. Now, what that means is that now Chris can figure out a whole bunch of tricky ways to get likes and then trick me into giving him money. The other way of doing it is making it so that the actual people who like him give Chris something where if you add all those up, it makes it so he gets it. And that's why I, in my little straw man proposal, made it so that like, well, I'm going to be clicking likes. cost you money. I'm going to be clicking likes all day long. But I don't want every single one of them to donate to everybody. I just want some number of them to donate to people. And maybe that's going to be random so that over time, the people who get the most money from me are the people who I click the most often. And I can control what my expenditures are, but I can click uh, likes all day long. Right. So that's so, an example of a Sybil resistant system. Right. They, they actually hit, use the, the right word there is that uh, when people talk about Sybil attacks, they, they say Sybil resistant because it's pretty much impossible to make it Sybil like like I completely prevent all types of civil because people are crafty. Yeah. And for example, like one of the things that you could do is like, you know, I could just have my marketing budget spent on sending likes to me. You know what I mean? And that is, and there's no, there's presumably no easy way to tell whether or not those are real likes or fake quote, fake likes. The thing is, is that the concept of a fake like doesn't really make sense. I mean, what it really is, is that like people that really wanted to do this, but I mean, they definitely were a like, so, so, anyways, so this is this is a problem not just for Twitter. Um, this is actually a big problem in just blockchain in general. I um, mean, lot, lot, this is actually a big problem in like most incentive models because you know there's this is a this is a hard gnarly problem. However, I don't think that it's a problem for blockchain. I just think it's a problem when you're doing anything online anonymously. Like Twitter and Facebook have this problem because there are in fact companies that I can pay to give me a whole bunch of likes by you know sleeper agents who have been pretending to be valid Twitter users for months. Yeah, and, th and this All fits right. this fits tightly in the theme of um, even if blockchain doesn't fix everything, um, it's still mostly good, and it doesn't have to fix everything. Yeah. All right. So we've talked about the basic idea where there's this feed that you control. We've talked about how there can be um, many different user interfaces. We've talked about how something like likes, which feels like it can only really exist in the centralized world, actually has this special extra role in the decentralized world. Are there any other features of Twitter that we want? Um, you know, let's let's cut it here to get we could we could actually talk more about features all day long unless you could think of one that you want to kind of hit um before no I, I don't think there's anything that really stands out i think that if we keep going then we're going to be talking about we're, we're, we're we would really be broadening out to the whole idea of social networks and we would start talking about things like well there's like followers and there's influencers and there's like you know aggregators and stuff like that there's a lot of ideas that we could go into detail on but i think that this is the key idea of twitter and one, one thing I do actually want to touch base for people watching this and want to actually do research more. Um, so Tim Berners-Lee, who, you know, the inventor of the Internet, um, he, after he invented the Internet, he really d uh, dove deep into, like, semantic web. Um, and he's been actually working on that quite a bit. And a lot of stuff we've been talking about by owning your own data, um, this actually, you know, doesn't even involve the blockchain. But now that blockchain exists, I can't, I, he, he has to now be, like, to think about integrating <laughs> the two things. Yeah, and there's this uh, there's this other Twitter like thing. I believe it's called Mastodon, and it's like a attempt to make something decentralized and peer to peer. But it doesn't use blockchain technology. It sort of uses sort of a uh, peer to peer stuff prior to blockchain. The, I'm I'm kind of nervous that I, I don't really totally understand what Mastodon is. So I apologize to Mastodon aficionados if I have not done an accurate job uh, describing how it works. But that's what I vaguely hear. One one more thing. So, um, Saya, uh, Saya Coin, who's also Boston uh, native, I I do know that they've actually been building, or that, that somebody's actually building some type of uh, decentralized social network similar to what we described on the Saya network, and which is a um, which would be competitor to IPFS. Um, but I, I really like that team. Cool. All right. All right. So uh, this yes, whole time, shout outs. Yeah. Okay. So this whole time we've been talking about pros and cons, but I mean, like, are there big pros and cons that we've left out? Because like it's the same con with most decentralized things is that because you can't a centralized company can actually kind of guide and force people to do things it becomes an easier system to build um, because of of uh, like decentralized Twitter 
or decentralized social media, it's much more complicated to build a system that has proper balance. Um, and that would be the biggest con is that, that in blockchain, it's much more difficult to build a system that doesn't collapse on itself. Hmm. I mean, I don't really completely follow what you're saying. And I sort of feel like maybe my counter to that is, is that decentralized blockchain, sorry, decentralized Twitter, the first version of that is going to be only evil Twitter or only normal Twitter. There's just going to be one interface. And that interface is going to say, we are the future of Twitter, but we are sensor resistant. And we do that by empowering you. And they're going to build something and they're going to be the only interface. And then somebody else is going to be like, ah, but I have a different vision about how to do this. And they're going to be able to reuse the other um, the other teams like back end and protocol and stuff like that. And they're going to be kind of followers on. I think it's unlikely that this is going to develop by like, oh, I just Jay just launches the J feed and Chris launches the Chris feed. And like, you know, 10 years later, or, you know, a few months later, we figure out what the standard for these feeds are going to be. I think that someone will build a product and that product will have these censorship resistant features. Um, but ultimately, the people that make it want to be the only ones that's the one interface, but they cannot be trusted to be the only interface. And so people will build an alternative. And I think that's the way that this develops. Um, yeah, I agree that there will be one interface to kind of like that's going to build this all. But because the entire like data portion is exposed, um, that that would be worth. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, I, I would still do it. Um, but I would say that uh, that is something that actually would care extra about. Now, is it a con that it's harder to have reliable advertising on this? So because there can be like, what does it mean to advertise uh, on this platform? Because you know that you're only advertising on certain discover on certain discovery front ends, or maybe you know that you're advertising like on Chris's feed. Yeah, no, Do you know I, what I mean, I don't I don't think um, this would be a con at all because um, the the interface the centralized interface knows what they're displaying and i don't see how it would be any different than what it currently is um because you all you're doing is you're pulling from a public data rather than your own personal database um, i guess what i mean is is that uh like if i'm an advertiser then i know that the twitter audience is is captured by twitter but i don't know but it still is so like what do you mean so my point well hold on let me let me just finish so we're good at reading each other's minds yeah. so maybe maybe everyone else didn't read my mind so what i'm saying is, is that yeah so twitter like they they can say our audience is captured that means that when you advertise with us you're really advertising to people cuz we're going to fight all day long we're going to figure out ways to get around their ad blockers you know what i mean that's really we're going to we're going to get them to use our twitter app we're going to make it so that features are only in the app and why do they do that so that you're captured so all of their job is to capture you and make sure that you will always see the ads and the the argument about the decentralized one is that, well, by empowering users, that means that users can make their own user interfaces that don't have the ads. So therefore, if you advertise with the decentralized Twitter, you're not going to get as many eyeballs, even if the network is the same size. But you wouldn't pay for them. Like that's that's the thing is like um, advertisers pay for the number of eyeballs. So if um, Twitter doesn't do a good job at building a good interface that draws the eyeballs, they shouldn't get paid. So I would say that's a pro. <laughs> 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 so basically what you're saying is, is that right now, Twitter can do a, quote, bad job at selecting ads that are good for me and do a bad job providing an interface. Uh, and they are actually hurting me, their customer, and they're hurting the advertiser, their customer, because they are basically getting an extra number of eyeballs over what they're really worth because the users don't have another option. You know, you know, we do this every time where we, we start off with the cons and then the other person t explains why that's actually not a con. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so like the obviously there's tons of pros, though. Um, I mean, owning your own data, um, being sensor resistant, um, knowing that the what you write is actually what you really write, being able to actually build on um, top of and build other services easily on the data or other companies to actually kind of maybe build extra extra middleware or, or doing all of this stuff it completely makes it makes it possible i mean the, the thing i was you know people talk about money legos when it talks about DeFi. this would just be social legos i like social media legos uh, yeah, yeah social media well legos. so something that i think is a really good pro actually is this whole thing that you actually have to pay to post stuff 
because I think that that is an amazing spam filter. Um, <laughs> and like if you especially if you have to like, you know, pay for me to hear your reply or, you know, basically that increases the th I think that right now it is too cheap to do things on Twitter. And that's one of the reasons that we have so much trash. And I think that by making it more costly to do that, it makes it so that there will be higher quality content. Yeah. And the, the, the con is once again, a con always is that um, people in power want to stay in power so that the companies that, uh, that already are, are, are in power most likely won't uh, implement this in the right way. So it's going to require somebody new to come in and build it and kind of disrupt how things work, which leads. Yeah. To well, hold on. So, yeah. So what you're just saying is that like Twitter has no reason to do this. They're the market leader. So somebody else, they, that that's why there, there could be a, you know, an, a different Twitter that says we're, we're the small guy, but you want to use us because we're censorship resistant. That's like the only story that's going to work right now. You want to go into, uh, are we going to fund them? Yeah, that's, that, was, that was my segue. I was, I'm getting good at this, you know, <laughs> talk about this segue to the next thing. So it's okay. Sure, yeah. Well, all right, Jay, um, someone approaches, you said, I want to actually build a, a decentralized, um, Twitter. Yeah. Do you, do you fund them? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I feel like this is, I feel like you always uh, say no. <laughs> I feel like I always say no, because the thing is, is that, you know, they're asking me for my money. And so I'm going to be like, how are you going to get my money? Okay. Like, how, how are you, how are you going to get a return on this? And I think that, um, I don't know. Actually, I think that this is a case where the discoverability interface that, that provides the advertising that provides the feedback I think that those are very straightforward. Like they can leverage a lot of existing tech and a lot of existing expertise. So that's not really like a big technical wild card. On the other hand, the, the core blockchain stuff, that's also pretty straightforward. And I think that there is a huge market need for this. Like there are many people out there in the world that feel like they're being let down by Twitter um, and they want this. So I think that this is actually a really good thing that, uh, yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm going for it. I'm. I'm You're going I'm, for this. I'm funding. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm going to fund them. All right. Um, <laughs> I would as well, um, because uh, like the way that I think of things, I I I like to think of things, you know, same way as you, as far as like, would the company itself make money? But I also like to think about the actual network. Could, um, I I believe that there is an incentive model that the that there's actually a way to actually um, to be able to be part early in the overall. Twitter protocol um, token. Um, so I, I, I would invest actually in both this time. So um, I would be okay with that. So, but okay. So we both said yes. And you just said that's, you know, it's uh, you, I mean, if Jay's going to invest, that's a great idea. Um, <laughs> why doesn't this exist? I mean, yeah. Hmm. Around? I think the main reason it doesn't exist is uh, that price uh, on the popular networks is too high. Um, you know, paying to post is just too expensive for a lot of things. Okay. Uh, I think that's probably the killer. Um, and I think that even for other networks, uh, I mean, maybe they're just not quite, um, they, they haven't, they haven't got the, the market share enough. Maybe they don't have the, you know, the stability of the, the interface, like, you know, Twitter's got a lot of users could these networks handle that many people querying for the latest feeds? I don't know. Uh, I think that, um, I think that this is something that's waiting to be built. I think maybe one other thing to say too, is, is that I think a lot of people, um, they like advertising is a huge numbers game. So the only way that that company makes money is if they have a huge number of users, they're of course not going to have a huge number of users right away. So they have an ins they they basically have this uh, risk where they have to make money right now, and I think that when you look at a lot of people who are like leaving Twitter and leaving Facebook and leaving newspapers, they're going to like subscription services where you subscribe directly to this person, and that's like I'm paying for access to your feed, and I think paying for access to your feed is actually harder to do on blockchain. I mean, you could do something kind of right where you can just say, well, like I post the things, but they're encrypted with my public key like, sorry, they're encrypted um, and you need to like pay for access to the key. But the problem with that is, is that like, well, I can just go share the key with somebody else. I could maybe make one that's personalized for you, but now the blockchain isn't really doing something super valuable. 
because uh, I now need to like make one message for every single one of my users. Uh, I think that it's a much more complicated technical problem to imagine how to have a private feed that you get paid for. And I feel like a lot of people that are going in this world, like that's what their first target is. But I, my guess is, is that, uh, you know, if there were still in-person, um, you know, uh, blockchain conferences, uh, I bet you if we just walked around and talked to people, we would find that there are actually 15 companies doing this. That's probably true. That is probably true. <laughs> All right. So um, we talked about, you know, would we fund it? Yes. Why didn't it exist? It should. Um, all right. T time to put your architect hat on. Yeah. All right. You and I, I'm CEO of cool social media name and you are the CTO. Um, all right. All right. CTO Jay, um, give me an estimate. What's it going to take to build decentralized, sensor resistant Twitter? All right. The blockchain portion. Right, you, get to use, you get to use reach. Yeah. yeah. So the blockchain portion, I'm going to say that uh, give me two people that have never programmed in blockchain before ever, and I'll give them three weeks to implement it, uh, provided they are uh, college students also doing finals at the same time. Um, it's funny that you actually say that <laughs> uh, because uh, like people listening, you're like, oh, he's he's full of BS. Um, but the, like the reason why he was very specific about this is because there is a team that built decentralized Twitter using reach while doing finals and they finished it in three weeks and they didn't even knew what blockchain was. And they um, I, do you remember what the name was? Uh, they I forget the name. I think they called it uh, Thoughts Eternal or Infinite Thoughts or something like that. So we'll, we'll put it, it. We'll put a link to it. So if you want to actually. See yeah. It, um, but now that is the blockchain part, the contract. And like we said at the very beginning, that like feed that just um, auth uh, authenticates the fact that I said these things, that is really easy to do. All of the difficulty of this is going to be building that aggregator, building the recommendation algorithm. Right. And the thing is, is that that right there is not a blockchain problem. That's just a normal building websites problem, uh, using machine learning problem. And there are a lot of experts that can do that. Um, and I think that, you know, building that is going to take a lot of time. It's going to be a very interesting, creative endeavor. Uh, but you don't need blockchain technology. You don't need blockchain specific information to go do that. Right. Uh, you're just going to be able to just go do that based on your existing skills. So I'm not saying that the company is built in three weeks. Jay, what I'm saying is, building is an that MVP here. <laughs> MVP. It's, it's not going to have all the bells and whistles from day one. Yeah. So I think that, you know, the contract piece, you're done in, you know, a month easily, uh, less than that. And then you get the MVP version of like the interface. I mean, I'm going to give you another month plus another month to make it really beautiful. I mean, why, less why than that build it at the same time. Yeah. Build, yeah. Just have two different teams do it. I mean, this is going to, this is a, this is one of those things where, uh, programmers and because I'm a programmer engineer at heart, right? Uh, programmers, you know, you could slap up some programmer art on that thing, you know, just do some really basic CSS. I mean, it's, it's basically done. I just think that, uh, Engineers like me, um, we vastly overestimate the difficulty of really starting and launching businesses and running real production websites as opposed to doing the engineering tech part. You know, the deployment side, the business side, those sure. are going to take I've longer. I've experienced that before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, this is not a hard thing to build. Cool. All right. And it's actually, and again, it's actually easier than building the, the real Twitter one because you don't need to build some giant reliable database because guess what? The giant reliable database, it already exists. That's what the blockchain is. Um, okay, so we just talked for a long time. Um, why don't you go ahead and just actually do a quick summary of everything that we kind of talked about and then I'll wrap it up and send sure. people on their way. <laughs> yeah, all right. So today we talked about on Better on Blockchain uh, how to imagine building Twitter on blockchain and what would be better and, uh, or worse about that. We talked about how the key idea of blockchain is to empower users to control their own data and the own, their own interactions with the network. In, the, in a situation like Twitter, the thing that you want to control is all of your data, your feed. You don't want anyone to be able to censor you. You don't want to be able to delete what you've said. And the key way to make this work is with a really simple smart contract. 
that really simple smart contract is going to be combined with a discovery system that's going to implement all of the other nice things that Twitter provides, like uh, recommendations and things like that. And that there are lots of ideas that are out there in the world for doing things like um, identity verification and incentivizing producing good content. And the thing that's special about blockchain is that when you build something, you don't have to build the entire ecosystem from day one. You build little um, composable uh, blocks. In this case, we're not building finance blocks or car sharing blocks. We're building social media blocks. There are a few pros. There are a few disadvantages to doing this. But a lot of those disadvantages, when you look at them the right way, they're really just providing a different feature set that we can very easily imagine that people can do. Chris and I are both going to fund this company, and you're going to have your MVP in one month, and then you're going to be you know, launching and taking over the world just a few months after that. Uh, it's been really fun chatting about this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jay, for joining me and you know, doing this again. Uh, we're going to continue to do these. Um, once again, like I said in the very beginning, uh, we're, we're going to run out of ideas soon, so please, in the comments, Give us hints on what you'd like to see. And of course, as always, go ahead and like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube uh, because uh, we want more people to watch us because that's just the type of people we are. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to know more about our company, Reach, uh, you can join our Discord and you can go to our website, reach.sh, and read our documentation at docs.reach.sh. We're a programming language for making programs like this dApps uh, really easily and safe and secure. Uh, and remember, it's always better on blockchain. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Later.